Alrighty. Um, well, we're going to jump right into things because, yeah, nothing really else to do. Um, we are just going to, we're going to do only two stories this week. So we're going to read the story, do some questions on it. Um, and then you guys will have a small assignment to do tomorrow. Um, we'll probably do that assignment tomorrow in groups if Mr. Turner is okay with that. Cool. And then, um, on Thursday and Friday, we'll also do the other assignment in groups as well. Um, just so it's smaller, we can have more interaction with people. So over on Google Classroom, um, I did clear everything out. So we're in quarter three. So all you should see now is just a couple of assignments, well, not even assignments, a couple of like messages about lesson times and the same stuff from the first quarter about websites and things like that. But the only thing in there now should just be the one assignment for ELA. It's called the wind in the willows. So we're going to go ahead and get that opened up. I'm going to start um, Go Guardian, just so you guys know. So I think you guys can tell when I start it, though. Doesn't it pop up on your computer? so quiet in here. <laughs> it's weird. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get this assignment opened. Hopefully mine opens. Give it a second. There's going good. Cool. So we're still in our um, unit two, which is still about animals and how they interact with humans and all that stuff. So we have a couple of stories that we'll read with this for the next few weeks. Um, we'll do kind of a bigger writing assignment, take a couple of weeks to write a good essay. Um, I think that's in like two or three weeks or something like that. But we will uh, start with a couple of stories. Oh, why is my camera on? Let's turn that off. There we go. All right. So go ahead and get this open. Hopefully, you have it open on your screen. Keep in mind, I can tell if you are there. So there's not too much to do with this. I'm going to hide the top. Um, there's a couple of little activities, um, really only like two that we're going to do. And that's all we're going to do today, just kind of read through it, get a feel for the story. And then tomorrow, we have 10 questions that we'll answer. Um, it'll be pretty individual with some guidance from me and Mr. Turner, but not too much help. Um, so you want to make sure you're listening to the story today. We'll read it again tomorrow just to refresh your mind on it. But so yeah, our first step is going to be to read it. I'll give you about one more minute. There's a couple of you guys I can see that are still getting over to the story. So I'll give you about one more minute to get that open. Hopefully it's loading for you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and start this. Um, I actually haven't even read this yet, so it's interesting. We're going to go ahead and um, listen to the background and hear about the author before we start anything. And then we will read through the story and look at those questions. Um, just like before, our first couple of things is going to be the first read. We're going to do, oh, hang on, let me let it go. Um, 
we are going to uh, do this first read chart. I'm going to have you guys do it, but we're also going to talk about it a little bit more in depth versus just doing it. Um, we've kind of built into our ELA stuff to slow down and talk more about what we're doing versus just reading things and going through story after story after story. So we'll spend a little bit more time on the stories this quarter, take a little bit more time with them. So I'm going to turn the volume up so you guys can hear it. Uh, it might be loud on your guys' end, so maybe turn it down for just a second. We're going to start with the background information and learn about the author, talk about that a little bit, and then we'll read through the story. So here we go. Three, two, one. From the Wind and the Willows by Kenneth Graham. Novel excerpt. Background. The Wind and the Willows is a series of connected stories about the adventures of four animal friends. Main characters are the shy mole, his friend Rat, Toad, and Badger. This excerpt begins after Mole and Rat have traveled far through the dangerous wild wood to the home of Badger, whom Mole has never met before. About the author, Kenneth Graham, born 1859, died 1932, was a Scottish author who wrote children's literature and essays on childhood. Graham's lifelong career was working at the Bank of England, the Wind in the Willows, which began as a series of bedtime stories for his son, is his most beloved creation, and it has been adapted many times as both a drama and a movie. Okay. So, um, I don't know what movie this would be. Mr. Turner, do you have any idea? I do. I know what movie it is. Oh, what movie is it? It's on Disney Plus. It's called The, uh, the Adventures of Toad and Ichabob or something like that. It's a Disney movie. Oh, okay. I've never heard of these before, but that sounds cool. So maybe after we read this, if you have Disney Plus, go watch the movie. That'd be kind of cool. I've seen it like two times already. Is it good? Yeah, I liked it. Okay. I might it's kind of funny. Like we said, I don't have anything else to do here. Nobody's here, so maybe I'll watch a movie. <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I won't watch the movie. I don't think I'm allowed to. But the background here. So we have... Four different animals. I, it might be told from different points of view. I don't know. Um, so we have a mole, a rat, a toad, and a badger, and they're going to travel through some woods to the home of the badger, who the mole has never met before. Do badgers eat moles? Is that a predator of the badger or um, a mole? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So I I don't know if I was the mole, I'd be a little scared. It's called it the. I said it wrong. It's the. It's called the Adventures of. Ichabob and Mr. Toad. Okay, that sounds cool. Mm -hmm. All righty. Um, so we're going to go ahead and read through it. Uh, like we have before for this first read, after we read through the story, we're going to answer those questions and talk about them. Um, so it's going to be similar to um, who the story is about, what, where, when, and why, um, marking up anything important. So as we're reading, guys, in the chat, let's not for right now. I know that we had two weeks of not talking to each other, but Maybe after our lesson, I'll give you guys some time to chat and stuff, but let's focus on ELA for right now, please. Okay. Um, we're going to mark up some of the important things. We're going to connect this story to anything else that we've read or seen, and then write a small summary. So we will do that after, but as we're reading, if you think of things, you're more than welcome to be typing things out already. So we're going to go ahead and listen to the story. It's a little bit long. We'll stop periodically and talk about what's happening just to make sure that we're all understanding the story, but here we go. I'm going to start playing it in three, two, one. From the Wind and the Willows by Kenneth Graham. Four, Mr. Badger. They waited patiently for what seemed a very long time, stamping in the snow to keep their feet warm. At last, they heard the sound of slow, shuffling footsteps approaching the door from the inside. It seemed, as the mole remarked to the rat, like someone walking in carpet slippers that were too large for him and down at heel, which was intelligent of Mole, because that was exactly what it was. There was the noise of a bolt shot back, and the door opened a few inches, enough to show a long snout and a pair of sleepy blinking eyes. Now the very next time this happens, said a gruff and suspicious voice, I shall be exceedingly angry. Who is it this time, disturbing people on such a night? 
Speak up. Oh, Badger, cried the rat. Let us in, please. It's me, Rat, and my friend Mole, and we've lost our way in the snow. What, Ratty, my dear little man, exclaimed the Badger, in quite a different voice. Come along in, both of you, at once. Why, you must be perished. Well, I never lost in the snow, and in the wild wood, too, and at this time of night. But come in with you. The two animals tumbled over each other in their eagerness to get inside, and heard the door shut behind them with great joy and relief. The badger, who wore a long dressing gown, and whose slippers were indeed very down at heel, carried a flat candlestick in his paw, and had probably been on his way to bed when their summons sounded. He looked kindly down on them and patted both their heads. This is not the sort of night for small animals to be out he said paternally. I'm afraid you've been up to some of your pranks again, Ratty. But come along. Come into the kitchen. There's a first-rate fire there and supper and everything. He shuffled on in front of them, carrying the light, and they followed him, nudging each other in an anticipating sort of way, down a long, gloomy, and to tell the truth, decidedly shabby passage, into a sort of a central hall out of which they could dimly see other long, tunnel-like passages branching, passages mysterious and without apparent end. But there were doors in the hall as well, stout, oaken, comfortable-looking doors. One of these the badger flung open, and at once they found themselves in all the glow and warmth of a large, fire-lit kitchen. The floor was well-worn red brick, and on the wide hearth burned a fire of logs between two attractive chimney corners tucked away in the wall, well out of any suspicion of draft. A couple of high-backed settles facing each other on either side of the fire gave further sitting accommodations for the sociably disposed. In the middle of the room stood a long table of plain boards placed on trestles with benches down each side. At one end of it, where an armchair stood pushed back, were spread the remains of the badger's plain but ample supper. Rows of spotless plates winked from the shelves of the dresser at the far end of the room, and from the rafters overhead hung hams, bundles of dried herbs, nets of onions, and baskets of eggs. It seemed a place where heroes could fitly feast after victory where weary harvesters could line up in scores along the table and keep their harvest home with mirth and song, or where two or three friends of simple tastes could sit about as they pleased and eat and smoke and talk in comfort and contentment. The ruddy brick floor smiled up at the smoky ceiling. The oaken settles, shiny with long wear, exchanged cheerful glances with each other. Plates on the dresser grinned at pots on the shelf, and the merry firelight flickered and played over everything without distinction. Okay, so before we go on, let's just kind of recap a little bit of what has happened so far. So at the beginning, we have, who are our characters at the very, very beginning that are standing outside? Let's say, we got a couple. Okay, so we have the rat and the mole that were outside. The badger was inside, right? They're at his house. They're like, let me in, please. It's cold. Um, and at first, is the badger, like, happy, sad, mad to have them? He's kind of grumpy because he's like, who is at my door? Um, I didn't hear that. Sorry, Don. Say it again. People came and kept knocking on his door, so he got mad. Yeah, it's like, it's nighttime. He's like, who is knocking at my door? But then when he sees that it's his friend Rat, he doesn't know Mole yet, but after he sees that it's his friend Rat, is he more friendly or is he still mad about it? What do you guys think? He's still friendly. Yeah, he's pretty friendly um, once he realizes who's here. Um, he lets him in. They go down a hallway. Um, is the house nice, run down? What do you guys think based on the really long descriptions that were happening here? Mm 
Any ideas? How's the house? It's probably very nice and expensive. Yeah, it looks pretty nice, right? Or sounds in movie, nice. In the movie, the house is really big. It's really big? Really big, like how they describe it. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, this one's like there's two chimneys. That's a lot of chimneys. Usually places don't even have chimneys. Um, two chimneys and then like there's a big table with food and benches. And it just sounds like it's a nice little area to be sitting in. Um, so they all kind of sit down and then we're going to go from there. We are on paragraph 10. Um, and yeah, I can see um, on my GoGuardian, a lot of you guys are having troubles loading for or waiting for it to load. Um, so just while it's loading, keep following along on mine if you need to. Um, and if it loads at the end, you can always go back in and fill in the stuff after, rewatch the recording. I will be posting all of these. So just keep that in mind that if it's not loading, you can always just be listening and following along on my screen instead until yours loads. Okay? So we're on paragraph 10, and here we go. Edger thrust them down on a settle to toast themselves at the fire and bade them remove their wet coats and boots. Then he fetched them dressing gowns and slippers and himself bathed the mole's shin with warm water and mended the cut with sticking plaster so the whole thing was just as good as new, if not better. In the embracing light and warmth, warm and dry at last, with weary legs propped up in front of them and a suggestive clink of plates being arranged on the table behind, it seemed to the storm-driven animals, now in safe anchorage, that the cold and trackless wild wood just left outside was miles and miles away, and all that they had suffered in it a half-forgotten dream. When at last they were thoroughly toasted, the badger summoned them to the table, where he had been busy laying a repast. They had felt pretty hungry before, but when they actually saw at last the supper that was spread for them, really it seemed only a question of what they should attack first, where all was so attractive, and whether the other things would obligingly wait for them till they had time to give them attention. Conversation was impossible for a long time, and when it was slowly resumed, it was that regrettable sort of conversation that results from talking with your mouth full. The badger did not mind that sort of thing at all, nor did he take any notice of elbows on the table or everybody speaking at once, as he did not go into society himself. He had got an idea that these things belonged to the things that didn't really matter. We know, of course, that he was wrong and took too narrow a view, because they do matter very much, though it would take too long to explain why. He sat in his armchair at the head of the table and nodded gravely at intervals as the animals told their story. And he did not seem surprised or shocked at anything, and he never said, I told you so, or just what I always said or remarked that they ought to have done so and so, or ought not to have done something else, the mole began to feel very friendly towards him. When supper was really finished at last, and each animal felt that his skin was now as tight as was decently safe, and that by this time he didn't care a hang for anybody or anything, they gathered round the glowing embers of the great wood fire and thought how jolly it was to be sitting up so late and so independent and so full. And after they had chatted for a time about things in general, the badger said heartily, Now then, tell us the news from your part of the world. How's old Toad going on? Oh, from bad to worse, said the rat gravely, while the mole cocked up on a settle and basking in the firelight, his heels higher than his head tried to look properly mournful. Another smash-up only last week, and a bad one. You see, he will insist on driving himself, and he's hopelessly incapable. If he'd only employ a decent, steady, well-trained animal, pay him good wages, and leave everything to him, he'd get on all right. But no, he's convinced he's a heaven-born driver, and nobody can teach him anything. And all the rest follows. How many has he had? inquired the badger gloomily. Smashes or machines? asked the rat. Oh, well, after all, it's the same thing with Toad. This is the seventh. As for the others, you know that coach house of his? 
Well, it's piled up, literally piled up to the roof with fragments of motor cars, none of them bigger than your hat. That accounts for the other six, so far as they can be accounted for. All right, so we have a little bit more information here. They uh, sat it down by the fire, warmed up for a while, um, and then they kind of start talking about their journey. This is a chapter from the story, so we don't know their journey before this. Um, so they must have traveled through the woods, and it's called the Wild Woods, so I'm assuming it's not the greatest um, walk through the woods. Uh, I can imagine that a nice little hike would be better than whatever they went through. Um, so, yeah, I don't have any kids. <laughs> um, I don't know where that just came from. Oh, what's up, Charlie? If you're talking, your mic isn't on, so we can't hear you. Hmm? All right, if you need some, Charlie, just let us know. Um, so they walked through the woods, they got to Badger's house, he fed them, got them warmed up, and then they start talking about their old friend Toad. Um, can anybody figure out what exactly he's doing? They say that he's smashed up, something about driving. Like I, I know exactly what the whole movie is about, and like I know exactly what he's doing. Go ahead and tell us, because I don't know. So okay. I think everybody... Well, in the movie, he is, they're walking, him and his horse is in a wagon, and they're going on an adventure, and then they see a motor car, and they take, so Rat and Mole are walking to go find him and take him, mm -hmm. and so he's pretending he is a motor car because of how much he wants one. So they took him back to Badger's house and locked him in a room. So he he jumps out the window, and like he kind he escapes it. So he goes and steals a motor car, and then he went to jail for it. So and he just wants a, a a car, basically. Yeah. So he just stole one, and he's like <laughs> he's like really jealous of all the people that have one. All right. Sounds like a fun dude. Well, in the movie, he kind of stole it from, like, a, a a bar guy, someone who runs a bar, and they kind of, okay. kind of, like, he signed a paper, okay. and kind of stole it, but I kind of can't remember about it, though. That's all right. Uh, Mr. Turner just said that there's a, a ride at Disneyland, if you've been there, called, what's it called, Mr. Toad's? Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, and now that he says that, I've been on that ride. And it's crazy. Like you, you, it goes everywhere, all over the place. And I think it probably would make me sick now, all the spinning and like, the jerking. <laughs> but um, the I do remember that ride, so that makes sense a little bit more. Okay. Like I said, I don't have a lot of context about this story, so this is helping me understand the story a little bit better. Um, so they're talking about Mr. Toad. Um, he's trying to get these cars. Um, and we are on paragraph 16. We're going to go ahead and finish the story here. we got about three minutes left. Um, and it starts with, he's been in the hospital. So paragraph 16. Here we go. Hospital three times put in the mall. And as for the fines he's had to pay, it's simply awful to think of. Yes, and that's part of the trouble, continued the rat. Toad's rich, we all know. But he's not a millionaire. And he's a hopelessly bad driver. And quite regardless of law and order, Killed or ruined, it's got to be one of the two things, sooner or later. Badger, we're his friends. Oughtn't we to do something? The Badger went through a bit of hard thinking. Now look here, he said at last, rather severely. Of course you know I can't do anything now. His two friends assented, quite understanding his point. No animal, according to the rules of animal etiquette, is ever expected to do anything strenuous or heroic or even moderately active during the off-season of winter. All are sleepy, some actually asleep. All are weather-bound, more or less, and all are resting from arduous days and nights during which every muscle in them has been severely tested and every energy kept at full stretch. Very well, then, continued the badger. But 
when once the year has really turned and the nights are shorter and halfway through them one rouses and feels fidgety and wanting to be up and doing by sunrise if not before you know both animals nodded gravely they knew well then went on the badger we that is you and me and our friend the mole here we'll take toad seriously in hand we'll stand no nonsense whatever we'll bring him back to reason by force if need be we'll make him be a sensible toad we'll you're asleep rat not me said the rat waking up with a jerk he's been asleep two or three times since supper said the mole laughing he himself was feeling quite wakeful and even lively though he didn't know why the reason was of course that he being naturally an underground animal by birth and breeding the situation of badger's house exactly suited him and made him feel at home while the rat who slept every night in a bedroom the windows of which opened on a breezy river naturally felt the atmosphere still and oppressive well it's time we were all in bed said the badger getting up and fetching flat candlesticks come along you two and i'll show you your quarters and take your time tomorrow morning breakfast at any hour you please he conducted the two animals to a long room that seemed half bed chamber and half loft the badger's winter stores which indeed were visible everywhere took up half the room piles of apples turnips and potatoes baskets full of nuts and jars of honey but the two little white beds on the remainder of the floor looked soft and inviting and the linen on them though coarse was clean and smelt beautifully of lavender and the mole and the water rat shaking off their garments in some 30 seconds tumbled in between the sheets in great joy and contentment all righty so that last part they're kind of deciding how are we going to help toad um and what do they kind of decide to do do you know how like badgers in that house well toad used to be the worker there but he kind of made like he's probably said that he's going off somewhere so we kind of made mr badger do all that do all of toad's work while he, while he goes out and runs around and does all this kind of stuff that makes sense because he wants to go find his car which he apparently is yeah. very bad at driving yeah. which makes sense with the ride in disneyland um so they decide that they're going to try and help him somehow but in the winter time they say that all animals are sleepy or asleep so they don't really do anything so when do they decide like okay we'll help him at this time when do they decide that let's see it talks about it where does it talk about it Isn't it like the next morning that they go and do it? It might be, yeah. They talk about in how the movie, it goes through winter, but when it first begins off, that they're in spring or summer. Okay, see, that kind of makes sense. They talked about how in the winter time, um, it says it right here, right? No animal really does anything um, super hard or heroic or active like at all during winter they're all sleepy some actually sleep so if you think about hibernation like bears they're actually asleep so in the winter time the animals aren't really doing a whole lot um but when the new year kind of rolls around and it gets warmer that's kind of when they decide we're going to help him um and the house that badger's at that's not even his house his house is like kind of underground that like makes sense just been staying because it's kind of cold right so they would make sense yeah. that be a little bit more underground for sure like in um, the winter though but in the movie it's just in spring and then it goes to winter and then it just stays in winter the rest of the movie very cool um and then they notice that rat keeps falling asleep and they're like okay maybe we should go to bed and figure this out tomorrow so then they all just kind of go to bed and that's the chapter of the book it's kind of in the middle of the book so we don't have a whole lot of stuff to go on after that but over here on the right side, we only have two activities that we're going to do today. Um, so we have making meaning. Um, we're just going to do these first two. We're going to do the first read and then close read, which I don't think is very long either. But first.
first read we're going to go ahead and start with and open up that chart. Okay. Um, and I'd like you guys to be answering in the chat or out loud if you want to, um, but just kind of answering the questions. We'll go through them kind of together. Um, this, the title of this is called The Wind in the Willows. Let's go ahead and get that typed out. If it's still not working um, and still loading, keep in mind that you can um, type this out later or do it later if you need to. Okay. But we are in a new quarter. I would suggest trying to keep up as much as possible. We're going to slow down on ELA, like I said. So there'll be less reading and writing assignments. We're going to spend more time on the assignments so that we're getting better um, understanding of these stories that we're reading and stuff. So um, go ahead and open up that first read for the wind in the willows, and we're going to start with the notice. Miss Jones. Yeah. Um, my computer isn't turning on, so I can't really do anything. Okay. Um, just try, keep trying until it keeps working. Um, but you can just listen for now and then uh, after. Make it up if you can. Okay. All righty. Cool. So let's start with the notice. Okay. Let's start with the who. Who is the story about? And remember, you guys can type it in the chat. You can say it out loud. Mr. Toad and all the other characters. Okay. So we've got Toad. Um, and then who else? We have three more characters. I know Dallin's not the only one there. Toad, Badger, Rat, and Mole. There we go. We got Mole. Um, I heard Badger and Rat. So that's the who is it about. Okay. Um, give you about a minute. Let's... Have you guys do what is it about? You can go ahead and type it out and then I'll have some people give answers. So go ahead and do the what part. Okay. So what is the story about? That's okay, Charlie, just do what you can. You weren't too late. I We've talked about the whole story since you've been on, so. Okay, so what is the story about? It's about making, like, helping Toad be better. Okay, helping Toad. Uh, the friends want... I spell things correctly. Help Toad. I guess that's his name, so we should capitalize it. Hey, these friends want to help Toad. I'm going to give you a minute to go ahead and type that out. If you're done, go ahead and work on the where and the when. Okay. These don't need to be complete sentences. I'll give you about, let's say, two minutes to uh, get the where and the when and all of that stuff, and then I'll ask for some answers. Feel free to type them in the chat. It's nice to see you guys participate. I already highlighted the annotate thing or did the thing. Awesome. Good. <clears throat> Alrighty. Um, anybody besides Dallin? Because I know that Dallin knows where and when. 
Anybody else know where or when this was happening? We talked about it a few times. Let's start with the where. Again, feel free to type it in the chat. Okay, where did this happen? Oh man, closed it. Um, the woods, good. They had a specific name. They were called the wild woods. And then specifically, whose house did they go to? Whose house were they in? The badger. The badgers, good. Badgers house, perfect. I'll give you a second to type that out. I accidentally closed Go Guardian, so I'm gonna get that back open. There we go. Okay, and then again, anybody else? Where? When was this? We kind of have an idea of when it was taking place. Think about the weather. What time of year was it? Winter. Winter time. Good. Winter, winter, perfect. And then finally, we'll talk about the why. Kind of similar to the what, but go ahead and take a minute or so and try to figure out why. Why were they traveling through the woods? What was the purpose of this story? Okay, take about a minute, type out your answer, and then we'll talk about it. Miss Jones. Yep. I'm making hot cocoa for me and my sister. Mm -hmm. And I burn my finger. You watch my good. Be careful. Also, now I want hot cocoa. That sounds good. So the why is about um why did Mole and Rat go to see Mr. Badger to talk about him and what to do with about Toad and try to figure out what they were gonna do about him. I like that answer. So Rat and Wolf went to Badger's house to figure out how to help Toad. That was the whole reason why they went there. Yep, that's exactly why they went there. Good. At least as far as th this part of the story is concerned. Good. So I'll give you guys a minute to type that out. And then if you are done with that, um, let's go ahead and have you guys work on that second part, the annotating. Um, this is where, let's go with two things. So highlight in the story, two important details. They can be anything that you think was important to the overall story or um, important to maybe why they went there, um, who was involved, whatever you think is important. So let's highlight two things. I'm gonna give you guys, let's say, three minutes. So it's 8.43 according to my watch. Um, what, 8.44? So I'm going to give you until 8.47 to go ahead and highlight two important things and get this typed out. Okay. Go ahead and work on that, please.
We'll do about one more minute. Make sure you're highlighting two important things. Oh, I put the wrong word. Oh, it went away because I closed it. Hopefully you got it typed out. I really wish that this would save for me. That would be nice. Hopefully you guys got the who, what, when, where, and why. If not, you might have to go back and watch that video or type out your own answers to it instead. We did talk about it, but that's all right. On this part though, right now, we're it's gonna delete after I go out of it again. But we're highlighting two important details according to you, what you think is important. But one more minute and then um, we'll go and talk about what you guys highlighted. It's kind of annoying that it deletes everything. I think it's just the way it is because I do like the preview, not my own account. So since it's the preview, I think that it just deletes whatever I type so that it's not constantly there. I think what makes sense to me, I guess. All right. So let's go ahead and highlight a few things. Um, is there anybody that wants to share one of the things that they highlighted that they found important? I highlighted the names. The names of the people? Yeah. So we have. Mole. I only highlighted three, though. That's okay. So we have mole and rat. And then, let's see, badger. Where's badger? Okay. So that's important. That's who is in the story. Who else highlighted something that they found important? Could be a small thing, could be a big thing. What else did you guys find important? Any other ideas? That was the only thing I highlighted. Okay. So that's, I don't have anything else for it. That's fine. I like that you highlighted who it's about. Anybody else get anything? Maybe what was happening? The part where the rat says that they're stuck in the snow? Let's see. Is this this first part, stamping in the snow? Okay. No, not that part. What paragraph is it in? Four, paragraph four, okay. Lost our way in the snow? Let us in, please. Okay, cool, awesome, all right. Anybody else highlight anything important? So they're lost in the snow. That will minute if you're typing and then we'll move on. Feel free to say it out loud too if you need to or want to. I'm okay with that. Okay, well, make sure you guys get two things highlighted. There's a lot of things in there that you could highlight, maybe about who they're trying to help, when they're trying to help them, lots of things like that, okay? So in our first read chart, again, um, again, it's gonna delete my stuff, but we're gonna look at the connections. Um, so this is where you're gonna connect it to something outside of the story, whether it's about yourself, someone else, a story, a movie, you so, can connect it to your the ride at Disneyland. That's true. I can connect it. Well, okay. Mr. Turner can connect it to the ride at Disneyland. <laughs> um, so our first connection can be the um, Disneyland ride. Okay. Um, Dallin, you have seen the movie, so you guys can uh, you could connect it to the movie. Um, what was it called? The 
I don't remember what it's called. It's called the, the Adventures of Ichabob and Mr. Toad. So it's kind of like two movies in one. Is a little it bit. Ichabod? Ichabob? Ichabob, yep. The B at the end or a G? A Bob. Bob. A Bob. Bob and Mr. Toad. So we can connect it to the movie. Is there anything else that maybe we can connect it to? Maybe a different story that we've read? You can kind of connect it to Tortoise and the Hare. The Tortoise and the Hare? Why do you connect it to that? Because it kind of... Well, I was thinking it's a different thing, so kind of not really. I was thinking of... Toad... I was thinking of Tortoise and Toad just because of how it sounds. I don't know why, but... But we could connect it because it's animals that are oh not, yeah yeah not alive they're all alive but like yeah talking animals I guess mm-hmm. and there's like a really famous person in it like mm-hmm. like hair and then there's like not that much famous people yeah things like that right anybody else have like a maybe a small connection that we can connect this to anything else I'll give you a second if you want to type it in the chat or say it out loud. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe you could connect it to a pet that you have. That's true. Maybe you're connecting to a pet. Um, maybe you have a toad or a rat, a rape, <laughs> rat, a mole. What was the other one? Last one? A badger. I don't know if any people have badgers as a pet. Have you guys ever heard of a honey badger? Yes, they live in Africa. Yeah, they're supposed to be like some of the most vicious animals. They are very world. vicious. Yeah. I so think I there's only them. like two di- types of badgers in the world. I have no idea how many types of badgers. I think there's like the honey badger and the American badger. Possible. But we the, have, we have to the honey badger is the most vicious one. Yeah, you hear a lot of stories about yeah. honey badgers. Yeah. Um, this badger in the story seems a lot nicer than the honey badgers. No, that's my kind of badger. Yeah. Anybody else have any connections, maybe? One last one. If you don't, that's okay. We have these couple. If you have your own, but you don't want to say them, feel free to type them out. Totally up to you. But if you have any other connections, we'll do about one more minute and see if anybody else has anything. You could kind of connect it to. Oh, it cut out. You can kind of connect it to like, because it sounds like Toad is like a bad person who like likes to steal things. So you can kind of connect it to stealing and stuff, or like okay. cars. So Toad is a little crazy, right? He's a maniac. Um, That's what yeah. he is. Yeah, based on that on um, Disneyland ride for sure. So Toad's a little crazy, so you can kind of connect it to robbers or, or uh, cars, stealing or cars, little things like that. Good. Okay. So our last thing here, our respond, it's going to be the last thing we do today because we're almost out of time, um, is just to write a quick summary. And I'm going to have you guys do this on your own. We've talked a lot about this story um, and about the movie, the Disneyland ride, all the little things. So I would like you guys to write um, a three to five sentence summary. Please write a three to five sentence summary about the story. So just three to five sentences to tell me what this story was about. And I do want you guys to do this part on your own um, because we've talked about it a lot. So I think you guys can write a couple sentences about what the story was about. But that is what you guys need to finish. Um, I'm going to stop the recording here because we don't need to record anymore. Just finish up that summary.